This is the time where we usually bring in Good Morning Football's Kyle Brandt, who will be with us momentarily. Wanted to bring to your attention, Steve, that for the second consecutive week, there was a Bills nominee for Kyle's oh, yeah. Angry Run segment. And it was the same guy that was nominated last week. Let's cue it. Same way we started last week. Same exact way. Alfred Molina in a bathrobe talking about Chest Rockwell and, and Dirk Diggler and Todd Parker. Motor in. What's your price? Devin Singletary. Motor Singletary is back for the second week in a row. And he's going to lower the boom. Oh, that is pure. That is absolutely pure. Bills don't have a running game. It's all Josh Allen. Shut up. Lower that shoulder. And watch. Look at the punches he's taking. This guy goes a little Mac on them. Bam, bam, bam. He holds on to the rock. He runs over the tackler. Sean Williams, G, out of the way. That is so good. Low man wins, right? This guy's down in the AstroTurf and still goes down. We got a lot of pissed off Bills fans last week who insisted, and by insisted, I mean threatened, that Motor Singletary should have won. Will this be this week? Can he possibly? I got to tell you, Motor, we love you. There's some beasts coming up right now. There's some beasts right now, dude. Yeah, there were some beasts. Uh, some some far more, let's just say, headline-grabbing, yeah. toss-aside angry runs yeah. by uh, one stuff. Najee Harris and even Nick Chubb who I thought uh, may have, I mean, Kyle, I know you argued intent for yep. Najee Harris, who is a two-time winner now this yes, season for him. in his rookie mm -hmm. year for angry runs. Mm -hmm. But, man, Nick Chubb had a guy looking like a surfboard. Uh, <laughs> full extension. <laughs> like, I mean, the guy looked like he might have been, might as well have been levitating or something. Uh, I might have gone Chubb on that, but, but you went Najee, and I, I, you know, I respect it. Brownie, I, I have never claimed to be a perfect man or an undefeated judger of angry <laughs> runs. Um, I do appreciate you taking the wrath of the Bills Mafia away from the Devin Singletary and towards the Nick Chubb because, uh, listen, I said it in the clip, you reiterated it, Devin Singletary's due. He's really due. Tough category. You know, yeah. L.A. Confidential <clears throat> was worthy of winning Best Picture but it was in the same year as Titanic. I'm just, I don't control that. <laughs> yeah. But I will tell yeah. you that in the 2020 season, Jonathan Taylor was nominated six times before he won. A true Susan Lucci S. Yeah. Yeah, so, Motor, yeah. just keep doing your thing, and I promise we'll it's, get it to you. Nick Chubb, I, I, I'm not necessarily sure we got that one right. But listen, again, tough category. It's it's hard to do it that, is. guys. Is it, it's getting tougher, too, because now the weather's turning. Everybody's starting to run the ball more. Certainly the Bills are running the football more with Devin Singletary. Every other team's starting to hand it off a little more. Um, so yeah. it's going to get tougher and tougher to win that, I think, going forward. It, what, and by the way, I, I guess we should ask you, so far, how's the new year going? Is it, you know, markedly different? Is it uh, – are you happy it's 2022? <laughs> is it – is it just is it yeah. turning of the calendar or is it something more than that? How's it gone so far? It's good. And and you know what, Steve? I thanks for asking, man. The the kids are good. Brooke, my wife, is great. I hope yours is as well. I, I think Larry David puts it at where does he put it at, Brownie? Is it January 4th that you're no longer allowed to say mm -hmm. happy new year anymore? But he's a curmudgeon. Right. And I don't I don't subscribe to yeah. that theory. The new year's going great. And now we're coming down the stretch of the longest NFL season of all time. It's really, right. really fun, Steve. Yeah, it is fun. And I, I think it, it's, I'm start. I, I will say this though, at this, I'm going to point in my life where I'm starting to feel it late in the year. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I, the rookie wall is real and I'm, you know, I'm, what do we call your wall? I don't know. The veteran wall. I, I think it's absolutely re early retirement. It's but. like a mile marker 23 yeah. out of 26. That's what it is. I've just hit That's heartbreak when the legs hill. start cramping up and the guys start, <laughs> I, I feel it. We're, Steve, now I understand the wavelength you're on. And yes, I'm fatigued as hell. You know what it is? I start to see like, normally I'm like, oh, I'll have a martini Friday night and maybe some wine on Saturday. Now I'm like, Tuesday? Sure. Let's pour <laughs> some bourbon. Why not? Right. So we got so we got five of the AFC playoff teams all locked in. Yeah. Tennessee, Kansas City, Cincinnati, Buffalo, New England. And then at the point, this point, it's Indianapolis and the Chargers with Vegas and Pittsburgh, all these guys. I, I've said this. Uh, and I'm, I'm anxious to get your take on this, Kyle. Yeah. I've said this. Kansas City, Cincinnati, Buffalo are a little bit different than Tennessee, New England, and Indianapolis. Kansas City, Cincinnati, Buffalo have got Mahomes, Allen, and Burrow. 
Tennessee's mm-hmm. got Tannehill, Mac Jones, and Carson Wentz. I, at this point in the playoffs, I'm really tending to think the teams with that guy – you kind of got to give the edge to, even though Tennessee's the one seed, even though New England's got you know things going on, and and Indianapolis has got that run game that won't quit. I think ultimately, at this point of the season, you really want that guy that can pull the trigger, and that points to the two, three, and four seed rather than the one, five, and six seed. I hear you, man. Isn't it an interesting field? And if you're if you're on the Tennessee Titans or if you're a Titans player, this is just absolutely beautiful for you. Yeah. This is perfect because. They're the one. They've earned it under ridiculous circumstances, and yet I don't. I don't think anybody thinks they're anything. I've seen people try to estimate. This is the worst one seed since fill in the blank, and this yeah. is the most beatable one seed since fill in the blank. Schrager was on our show the other day, and this is this is yesterday. So just after the Titans had become the one because the Chiefs lost, and he's just asking out loud. The Chiefs go to Tennessee. The Bills go to Tennessee. Is anybody taking the Titans? Here's what I would say of those fan bases. Be very, very careful of the Titans because they are heavily flawed and they're not as flash and not as fun. They got some really fat, impressive skins on the wall. This whole regime ended the Brady New England thing. They ended the Lamar Jackson Ravens season. They They are a varsity team. There's some freshmen in this squad. If the Bengals, freshmen, the Chargers, if they get in, freshmen. The Titans are not that cool or not that flashy. But, man, they are tough as hell. And I I think it's a fascinating way this is going because when everybody says one thing, oh, the Titans are eminently beatable, I bet you they'll turn around and surprise some people. I, I would say it, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I said they are the best win-ugly team in football. Mm. They, uh, mm-hmm. they win ugly better than anybody. I'll say, I'll say this, too. I've got a lot of respect for Mike Vrabel and his staff because they never – I mean, when you get down to it, and there's, and I say that I've never been very good at it, at game management, timeouts, and stuff like that. They never miss. They take a timeout when they need it. They, they save timeouts. I remember at the end of the Bills-Titans game earlier this season, the Titans refused, 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 refused to take a timeout as the game was winding down. And all of a sudden, you realize the pressure was back on Buffalo. They got to get this play in. They got to decide. They got to go. They're not getting a break from the Tennessee Titans. And it ends up they hustle a plate in, somebody slips and falls, and the game is over. Mike Vrabel deserves a lot of credit for the way he handles game management, timeouts, clock management, end of game, end of half, all of the stuff that falls at a coach's feet that sometimes slips through the cracks. He and his staff really tend to get right every single time. I got to tip my hat to them. They're really good at that. You should, Steve. Do we see what happened at the end of the Cowboys Cardinals game? The Cowboys cause a fumble. It's right there on the on the ground. They recover it. The referees don't call it a fumble. Mike McCarthy can't challenge it because he has no timeouts left. He's out of timeouts. It's an obvious fumble that could change the entire game. And it's that tiny little nuance that I think Rabel is really good at. And to make it even more interesting, like, I don't know if Zach Taylor is going to be good at that in the playoffs or if it's Brandon Staley or Rich Basaccia who might be coaching right. one of these playoff teams. I don't know how we've gotten this far in the conversation either without saying I, you guys have probably seen it. And this is this all I want from the playoffs. I don't care who wins the Super Bowl, who wins the AFC. I want one thing. And it, it goes like this. All right. So the Steelers beat the Ravens next week. They win out. Then the Jaguars flip the table and beat the Colts. Uh, I, which here we go. Put the in this scenario out of my Sunday mouth. night. Here we go. If you, go right, ahead. So here we go. If anybody is listening or watching has not heard this, it is the craziest thing ever. Again, Steelers beat Ravens. Pretty feasible. Jaguars beat Colts. Going to be tough, but the Colts have not won in Jacksonville since 2014. If both of those things happen, then the Sunday nighter on NBC, the national game, which is Raiders Chargers, the scenario is it's sure it's a win and in. However, if the game were to end in a tie between the Raiders and Chargers, both teams get into the playoffs. Both get in, which yeah. means. If the Steelers win earlier in that day against the Ravens, and if the Jaguars win earlier that day against the Colts, it would be mutually beneficial for both the Chargers and Raiders, huge rivals, to say, hey, let's both get in here. Why? What are we thinking? Let's both punch our ticket by any means necessary. Now, I don't know how you would do that short of just running the ball into the line every time or taking a knee, but I've never seen that before, and I want to see it Sunday. 
Well, yeah, yeah, and Steve and I <clears throat> talked about this already on the show, and we were going to ask you Great. about it, but good on you for running it up the flagpole already. And Steve openly wondered if the scenario unfolds. There's obviously four hours before the game with yeah. you know a tie, and they're both in available to them. Does the commissioner lob a phone call to both owners? And if yeah. he does, I don't know if Mark Davis is picking it up. What <laughs> what kind of favor is he going to do Raj right now after yeah. feeling his, his head coach got scapegoated and railroaded out of the league? Uh-huh. He's not even picking right. up the phone. That's fascinating because they got beef, allegedly. I, I'm sure it's not real warm and rosy. So then do you – because it has to be both of them. Yeah, you, you, you yeah. Gotta, you got to get both of them on the phone. And so what? You got a four-hour gap in which, oh, my God, the Jaguars won. What are we going to do? You got to call those teams and be like, don't you dare on NBC do some nonsense that results in a tie. However, I, I as a fan of the game and as an agent of chaos, would really like the theater of watching oh, yeah. these two rival teams trying to figure out how to tie. Steve, can you even begin to venture – Let's say this hypothetical where they say, you know what, behind closed doors, damn it, we're going to tie. You, uh, shake hands. We agree. The owners are on board. The coaches are on board. How would you even execute that? A lot of I kneel would, downs, right? I would kneel down every play. I would make it every as time. Pa- as Because then that's just rubbing the league's nose yes, in it. Can you as not painfully it? obvious as it can possibly be, I would kneel down 15 <laughs> consecutive possessions, both sides. And we'll punt it down to your end. So, you know, we'll punt it down to you so you're out of field goal range. But as long mm-hmm. as you're punt, we'll just do it. We'll, and we won't field a punt. We won't do anything. We'll, no turnovers, none of that stuff. We'll let every punt bounce. Uh, and that'll be it. Um uh, and and this is coming from a man, Kyle, who uh-huh. in his 18 years at CBS would tell the producers whenever they were putting up playoff scenarios, That's right. would shout at them and say, don't you dare put ties up there on the scenarios. Right. You know I don't want to see them. I don't want to look at them. <laughs> Nothing. You know what? It's like when they do the playoff scenarios, they say, well, if this team wins, this team loses, this team wins it. Now, if, they, if this team ties, yeah. I said, no, throw yeah. the ties out because – it, it turns it into a phone book trying to read the graphic on the screen for first thing. Second thing is, second yeah. thing is, if it ties, nobody's going to remember what it means anyway, so we'll go back and fix it. <laughs> Just give me the wins, losses. And I, I told him that. But this is, this is, it opens the door to, you know, something that is outside the control of everybody involved. Yeah. Right? The, you're going to put the Raiders, you'll put the Raiders and Chargers you, they got to deal with it. You can say whatever you want. You got to do this. You gotta, but they got, they're the ones that are in, have got their, that's their skin in the game, yeah. not yours. But this is DEFCON 5 for the very fabric of the league in terms of its competitive nature. I mean, this, right? I mean, the alarm bells are going off. Whoop, whoop, oh, at Park Avenue, too. if this is the scenario that sits in front of them with four hours before and that let me game. Say this, too. How, you don't think. Jim Ursay and Frank Reich and the Indianapolis mm-hmm. Colts would absolutely mm-hmm. have their heads explode because they're the ones that are out. Yeah, they're gone. They're, they're done. done. So they'd be freaking out. And even if they were, even if they were to attempt to start it, meaning the Raiders and the Chargers, and let's say they're trying to be slick about it, and it's just you know run left, run right, and they got at halftime th- there would be some sort of intervention or at the quarter or there would be threats or there would be <laughs> promises like it would be truly like a world war three of competitiveness and i've never been a bigger jaguars fan in my life sorry coach <laughs> reich jonathan taylor great season the hell with you i, I let me, need the theater of sunday night and yeah. i want to take it one step further the game is the game is in las vegas right yes it's in oh las vegas gosh. what oh, are the hell are the yeah. odds makers doing Mama needs a new set of sneakers, baby. Yeah. No, this is the Super Bowl. I never mind the one in LA in February. Chargers Raiders on week 18 Sunday. That's the Super Bowl. We're going. I got to go. This is the best game of all it's time. It's unbelievable. Nothing to nothing. You'd yeah. have to I mean the the odd, you'd almost have to take that game off the board if if you're I think they would. Maker. I think they take, take it, it off. off the board. Yeah, and I don't know, Steve, honestly, due respect, I don't know if I like the idea of punts because if a snap goes over somebody's head, that could be a safety or something like that. We might just have to knee, take a knee on fourth. Go for it on fourth maybe down. And just change possessions eventually. But if you took enough knees starting at the 25, I think eventually you'd be back in the end zone. I, we have to or, do this right. Because how this about is this? Only you, could do it, you could do it both ways. Just say, hey, this opening kickoff, we're going to let you run it to midfield. <laughs> and then what? 
We're gonna you're gonna go bounce? down. You're gonna go down, and then we'll trade kneel downs through this first half, right at midfield. <laughs> or take knees, take knees on first, second, and third down, and then run it forward five yards on fourth down. Turnover on downs, and now you go and do the same thing. Right. But the table is set. Let me get this. The kickoff, and then you're gonna have kickers gonna run to the fifty and fall down at the fifty yard line. <laughs> just right trip. there. Yeah, they'll, they'll trip. Just, and, and no, it won't even fall down. Creatively It'll be like trip. practice. He'll run into a crowd. They'll stand him up. Forward progress. Whistle Blow the blows. whistle. Nobody okay. goes down. Everybody's healthy. I would healthy. only say this to my bosses. You know, I, I'm an NFL employee. I should probably shut the hell up right now. But I would only say huge ratings. Everyone will turn in to watch this. That's this, good point. This, nothing attracts a crowd like a crowd. You might be like, well, NBC will. No, no, no. NBC will have the craziest, weirdest football game ever played. I think it's actually a good thing. Yeah, yeah. You Unless know, they decide to go that. to the Heidi, go to Heidi or something. That is, no, no, that's exactly no, no, Heidi. We're doing I'll say this. Raiders. I don't want to be the guy in the booth trying to make in, make entertainment of it. Wow. But well, yeah, this is going to be Collinsworth and and I would think Al, maybe Tariko. Yeah. They got to go to work. They, yeah, be like a fourth preseason I, game. It is Phil, really Steve, I'm Phil. all about it. I I think you're right. Everybody would watch it. Mm-hmm. I'd like mm-hmm. to see the highlight mm-hmm. reel from the game. The um, post-game press conferences when they <laughs> asked these guys, Staley and Versace, so what were you thinking there in the third quarter? Like, it half was just time. so much. Oh, my, at halftime. Coach, what do you need from your team? Quick More kneel downs. downs. That's it. <laughs> it just would be on and on. God, uh, good. It's the best I'm, game ever. There's so I'm many layers to that. I, I think it's really intriguing. I think um, – Yeah, we've talked so much about it, though. Now it's not going to happen. You know? you know what? We're in the middle no. of a pandemic. Jaguars. Do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, on a more important subject, Kyle – uh, yeah. The thing we're knocking around with our listeners today is, is there an ideal matchup in your mind for wild card round for the Bills in the playoffs? And obviously there's six possible teams mm-hmm. it could still be. But, okay. you know, Indy, Chargers, Raiders, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, New England. Does one tickle your fancy as a good matchup to help the Bills advance? All right, well, let's definitely take Indy out of the mix. We don't want any part of them right now. Uh, That's not pretty. Um, Listen, some of these are the ones you're listing, and we don't even know if they're in. You take the Chargers all day long. The Chargers are heavily flawed and really bad on defense, and Justin Herbert is God's gift, but you know, I guess, but he's a sub-500 quarterback in his career. I would take the Chargers any day. A realistic one, and and this is not a hot take. If I'm a Bills fan – I got, I got no fear in New England right now, damn it. I got no fear. They handled them fine in a real game played on the planet Earth in regular, semi-regular conditions. Um, I think that the Mac Jones experience has kind of peaked. I really do. I think the defense, the Patriots, has kind of peaked. Now, granted, they put up 50 points last week. I get it. But it was on, like, a COVID-ravaged Jacksonville team. It doesn't count. I'm not afraid of New England at all. I would answer your question only that way. The team's more that you don't want to play no on any part of Indianapolis. And um, I actually don't love the Tennessee matchup eventually, especially if what you're hearing about Henry getting back, and especially if they have a bye to get him back. I don't like those two teams because yeah. we've seen that movie already this year. Right. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. Although um, any of these teams, um, if Buffalo's clicking, they got the number one defense in the league and they're scoring more points than anybody. They're the best point differential team. I mean, the Bills are a team. I don't. I think that if teams are looking around – um, uh, this is not the bills are not high on the list of anybody else to be wanting to come down. Even if the, if you get them in Hell your no. joint, I don't think Indianapolis would want any part of Buffalo in their building in great conditions. You can say what you want mm. about the run defense. It's not the same run defense. It was a month ago. And this offense in great weather or in a dome, we haven't mm-hmm. seen this year. Well, that game would be here. It wouldn't be. Right. Indy, but yeah, yeah. I know right. what you're saying. Um, I, and I got I got to tell you guys, I, I'm going to put cards on the table. I have to come clean. I, uh, I two-timed you guys. I was, I was invited onto Chiefs Radio, and I accepted <laughs> the invitation. And I want you to know that I stayed real, and I don't just go around saying every team's the greatest. They said right now, this was a couple days ago, after these last games, they said, who do you think is the best team in the AFC? And I said, the Bills. I think it's the Bills. I absolutely do. And they, oh, get out of here. And all these Twitter fans just killing me for saying the Bills. I'll say it again. I think the season hit rock bottom, not in the, in the first New England game, at halftime of the Tampa game, I think that it was the see. I felt like the whole thing, all the dreams were being shattered. It was awful. The team that came out of that halftime locker room has been the best team in football for two and a half weeks. I have not, and that includes the Packers. And I have full respect for the Packers, but I'm talking not the AFC East, not the AFC, the whole deal. I have not seen a better team than the Buffalo Bills. And I think you're right, Steve. 
I know the Colts game was ugly. I know the Titans game was a little ugly. It was a few months ago, though, and this team right now is – I just think Buffalo's awesome right now. Kyle, just because we live with scar tissue and we are concerned yeah. about just about everything, this past week's game against the Falcons, Josh mm -hmm. has his lowest passer rating of his career in a game. Yeah. 17 with three interceptions and four pass attempts. Now, granted, he helps the team with his legs, runs for a couple of touchdowns, finds a way to help this team, despite – having three turnovers and a fumble on a punt return, essentially four turnovers and 12 points against. As a result, they still win by 14. Um, <laughs> is that a good thing? Or is that variance in play where Josh arguably plays his best start to finish game of the year against the Patriots, followed yeah. by this one? Is that a concern, or should it be, this late in the season as this team prepares for the playoffs? It's a philosophical way of looking at it. We, we've talked for three years about the sugar high Josh Allen and how he gets excited and makes some mistakes. I, I, I can't sit here and say how he played in the biggest game of his life, in, 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 in the biggest regular season game of his life maybe, at New England was amazing. The second half at Tampa was amazing. And played a sloppy game at home against the who cares Falcons in a very flat vibe. Like I'm not, I'm not actually going to cast a whole bunch of judgment on that. I knew the turnovers were there, and I know he had a red zone turnover. He was so good for a couple of weeks, and if he had done a game like that against New England or if he had done it against the Buccaneers, fine. Atlanta, I, I don't know. It's, I, I'm not going to pass a lot of judgment on how he played in that game. It's always the concern a little bit, but I really feel like he's matured, and I just don't see him having a playoff game like that, and that's all anybody cares about. This yeah, point. I mean, he does yeah. rise to the occasion. The higher he the does. stakes, usually the better he plays. I just wanted to throw that out there to see if it's something that – You got to. Because we, <laughs> we don't have the objective viewpoint. It's Bill's myopia here. So right. we need to consult people like you for these answers. Kyle, do you have any – I know this is – I don't want to come mm -hmm. out of left field. Do you have any New Year's resolutions that you're thinking about or you've already cost, you know, kicked to the curb? Like I oh have. man, yeah. <laughs> you know, mine typically, most of mine, Steve, and is this they they fall under the the parenting umbrella. But it's just it's it's uh, to try to be on the phone less. Like everybody's got a certain degree of cell phone addiction. Mine's getting out of control. I, I'm like some sort of fiend for the thing. I can't tell you how many conversations I had in 2020 with my kid while I'm looking at the phone and they're talking to me. So I'm trying to put it down. And here's the test. Here's how you know you're a real cell phone addict. And you guys, tell, let me know if you do this. Yeah, you go to sleep at night, and um, let's say you got to get up at you know, one thirty in the morning to go to the bathroom. You go to the bathroom. When you get up and go to the bathroom in the dark, do you check your phone in the middle of the night? Hell no. I was checking it for a while, and I felt like an absolute savage. So that's step oh, one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Not for great. me, I, I'll actually get the. I'm I'm at a really nice place in my life now, where I'm almost sixty. And after you know a nice long career in the NFL, and you know my share of concussions. There are times when I forget that I actually own a phone and will lock, walk off without it. And so I think it's an, oh, actually Jesus, a good dude. thing to me. It's a great side effect of being <laughs> old and senile. I've walked That's off in the last week. That's of the hits that you <laughs> That's took right. is that you don't have I think cell I've, phone addiction. I've walked off and left my phone somewhere in my house without having it for okay. you know, like an hour and forgot I okay. you know should have it with me. So it's I'm actually so, getting a, a nice side effect. Kyle, me. we want to finish with this because to me yes. this – falls into your line of humor and, and you have good humor on the show, obviously every okay. week. So we had Lee Smith on last week mm -hmm. and there was a Jersey swap argument between Dawson Knox and John Feliciano, two of his closest teammates when he was here with the bills, obviously now with the Falcons coming back and Dawson Knox got first dibs on doing the Jersey swap with him at the end of the game. Okay. So Lee Smith in his generous way decided he would accommodate John Feliciano by signing his jock strap for him. And apparently <laughs> he felt it necessary to tweet it out after mentioning it here on one bills live. Okay. Um, how out of the realm of couthness is this? Do you think, or is this football players being football players? Uh, it's not terribly couthy. The, the real, the real outside the realm landing spot, Brownie would be, as you know, a lot of these players, once they get the Jersey signed, they then take it to their home office and frame it and put them right. up against the wall. Will there be a framed jock strap that is like over his shoulder for future interviews? Because I have to say, it couldn't it have been the pants or the socks or the gloves? Right. Um, That's not Lee Smith. I, it, yeah. <laughs> no. The guys who play the O-line, the D-line, whether it be at the Pee Wee level or Hall of Famers, 
are some of the most physically vile people I've ever come across. And they just <laughs> oh, indulge yeah. in that stuff. So they just love any kind of bodily function, any kind of reference like that. So in, for you and me, wildly uncouth. For the big men, just just pretty much cool. Yeah, yeah. It is yeah. a it is a savage kingdom in there, no question about it. <laughs> I, I will say this: the the great comeback of all time was John Feliciano upon getting the said gift that we said said he thought that the jockstrap would be bigger. Um, so <laughs> perfect. Yeah, it's right. Perfect. I thought it was Which a great. Fell right in line with the was whole a, a savage comeback on a on a was great a uh, great gift. So there you go. Kyle, thanks as always. Uh, we're not even going to ask you for a score prediction for Bills Jets. I mean, the game means something because the division title's on the line, but we're confident in the Bills taking care of business. I take it. Well, I remember too. last time around, Brownie, it was you were like, I remember, I remember the Jets always play the Bills tough. And then they went by like four touchdowns. So like, yeah, I yeah, think we're did. over that. And to your point, even though you didn't ask for it, I'm going to give you uh, 37 to 13 for the Buffalo mm. Bills. And uh, the Bills fans are helping me with my cell phone addiction because I, I don't check anymore because all it is is them threatening me for not giving motor single turn. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see if we can we'll see if we can get to work and tamp that down for you a little oh, bit. Uh, and and yes. Oh, stroke. Hey guys, awesome. Didn't pay the bill. Got to go. Love Take care, you. Kyle. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> That's outstanding.